What's up, Odoers, and welcome back. Today we're discussing manufacturing orders, or MOs, as well as the work orders within them. In Odoo's manufacturing app, a MO, or manufacturing order, specifies which product needs to be produced, including the quantity, required materials, and production timeline. It serves as a key document in the manufacturing process, ensuring that the right products are made according to the demand and operational capacity. For example, let's say that we received an order for, I don't know, five office desks. To ensure that we manufacture the right quantity while tracking the raw materials used and assembly steps, we create an MO for five units. Within that MO, work orders break the process into structured steps, helping manufacturers manage tasks to fulfill an MO, like maybe cutting wood, assembling parts, and applying finishing touches. That makes sense, right? Enough chit chat, let's jump into Odoo so I can show you exactly what I mean. All right, let's start off on the Odoo Manufacturing App Dashboard. To create a new MO, all I need to do is select Operations and then Manufacturing Orders. Follow this by selecting New at the top left over here. And here we have a new MO form for us to fill out. So here, the first thing we need to do is select the product that we want to manufacture inside of our product field. As we already mentioned it, I think we should go with the Office Desk. Okay, it's important to remember that MOs can only be created for one or more units of a single product. If I want to manufacture a coat rack as well, I need to create a separate MO for it. Now, after I select the product, a few things change on the MO form. First, the bill of material field auto populates right there with the bill of materials or bomb for the product. Essentially, if you don't know, a bomb is the blueprint for how the product should be made, including the full list of all of the required ingredients, components, work orders, you name it. If you already know a bit about bombs, you'll also know that a single product can have multiple bombs. If I want to select a different one inside of Odoo for this MO, I can do so by clicking in the Bill of Material field. Now you notice there's an option for a standing office desk bomb. I'm not going to do that though right now. Believe it or not, standing desks are great until you realize you've been standing still, like you're waiting in line at the DMV. We don't want that right now. It's also worth mentioning that you can select a specific bomb before a product is selected, which causes the product field to auto-populate instead in the reverse. However, by selecting the product first, it makes the bill of material field only show bombs for that specific product. So below the product field is the quantity field that we also happen to have right there. Here, we can enter the amount of desks that will be manufactured. For example, I can enter a quantity of five. We're going to click away. Doing so would automatically update the component quantities that we have over here for the work orders. And you'll kind of notice if we go over to work orders, Expected duration has gone up as well right here. That's pretty interesting. But being said, we're going to go back to one. The two other sections of the form that auto populate when a product or bomb is selected are the components and the work orders. So the components tab shows us, as I said, all the components needed to manufacture the specific product. In the case of the office desk, it needs a desktop, a single one, and then four wooden legs right there. On the right side of the product lines, we also see the required quantity for each component, as I just talked about. If I click into our work orders tab over here, I could see the operations required to manufacture the product. In this case, we need to cut the desktop, and I'm going to stretch so you can see. So we need to cut the desktop over there, and then we add the wooden legs afterwards. The line for each operation also shows the work center where it will be carried out, assembly one and assembly two and the expected duration that we happen to have right over here. And then you can also have a real duration as well. As you can see, both of these operations will take exactly 60 minutes to complete. Now you've probably already figured out that the combined time to complete both operations is a total of two hours. So where can we see that reflected on the MO form? Okay, so if we click confirm up in the top left of the MO, we will see in our case, a scheduled end over here. And if we take a look at the scheduled date and end fields, we will see that these fields are automatically updated based on the two operations of estimated times right there. The estimated time end for the scheduled end happens to be exactly two hours after the scheduled date. Makes sense, right? If I want to, I can also change the scheduled date up at the top by selecting into it. And this indicates when I need to start building the desk. However, the end field can't be modified and will always be set to the scheduled date plus the expected duration of all the work orders. As servant Odoers might notice this, we actually happen to new, have a new component status field that has appeared right there. Since we have all the required components in stock, the status is available and it's green. If we were missing one or more required components, 
It would instead read not available. Furthermore, the word available appears in a green font, as I just mentioned. This means that the MO is good to go, ready to start. We can also see this reflected in the chatter as well, as you could tell over here. So everything happens to be ready. What else can that mean? Well, that means that we can go. Right now we have one step manufacturing enabled. This means that MOs will be marked as ready as long as we have enough components in stock. If we were using two or three step manufacturing, we would need to transfer components to the production location before the MO would be ready to start. In that situation, component status would still be available, but it would appear in an orange color or perhaps yellow if you are a little bit colorblind, which means waiting for components. So down over here in our work orders tab, we see a real duration column that I was talking about earlier, which was there before the MO was confirmed, but it now reads as zero for each work order. The real duration represents the actual time that it takes to complete a work order. We also see in our case, a new status column over there, which displays the current status for each work order. The cut desktop one is ready right now, since it's the first work order and the MO itself is ready. If I happen to click on the green start button right there on the right, the real duration timer begins counting, as you can tell right there. And the status changes itself to in progress. The insert wooden legs work order is marked as waiting right now. Because you guessed it, the cut desktop work order needs to be completed first. If I click on the green done check bar right over there, would you look at that? The status of insert, wedding, uh, insert the wooden leg small dupsy right there happens to be ready since it's no longer waiting on the other work orders. I'm just going to also very quickly complete that one right there. And now we're done fully. Okay, so everything is done with both work orders completed and marked as finished. I'm ready to close out the MO. So to do that, all I need to do is click on our produce all button at the top of the screen right there. And just like that, the MO is closed and we've officially produced one office desk. Not too shabby, right? And that actually brings us to the end of this amazing tutorial. Today you learn how to create and process manufacturing orders along with the work orders within them. See you in the next video, doers. I'll catch you on the flip side. Today's snack was, I ran out of snacks. I've been eating all day.